Hello, my loves. I'm coming at you in the middle of, well, a worldwide pandemic. We are literally across the world in this moment on quarantine, an invited and encouraged quarantine, something none of us have ever experienced before. And one of the most wild things is that it truly is worldwide. I had a crazy moment the other day being on a video call with some of my students in my signature program mentor masterclass who are training to become life coaches, women from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, um, Canada, and all across the US, Australia. I'm looking at their faces and seeing that all of them are around the world experiencing the same thing. Many of them home with their kids trying to figure out what's happening um, how to embrace the invitation and the days and show up for what needs to be showed up for. And ultimately, I think as a collective, um, there's a lot to be grateful for, but there's also a lot of fear circulating. So I really want to invite you to, if you don't already, get your shoes on, get your body moving, break out from the chains of your house and let's go on a walk together today. I want to talk about intuition. I went on a rampage last week for the first official podcast of the season and or I guess it was the the second um really talking about authority figures. And that was before we are in the situation we are in now where you can see just how quickly we can be controlled by fear. And I say that not to scare you, but it is wild that in a matter of days, we all will listen to authorities, quit our jobs, lose our normal routine, shift gears, and literally stay inside our homes. Most of us are following the rules. And um, and in this case, maybe it it is, we can agree, an important thing for society and it goes to show you how easily it is for us to listen to authority figures and not listen to our intuition. And I talked a lot about that in our last episode and today I think what's more important than talking about that is actually making way for developing a greater relationship with our intuition and if you already have a good relationship with it, then taking this walk today to tune in and see what messages you receive. So the first thing I want to start off with, though, is just a collective quarantine gratitude list. Because I don't know about you, but there are a lot of things we can fear in this moment about what's going to happen with our economy after that, with our work, with our lives. Things are definitely going to change. I think we can all agree that they already are. And... Some things that I noted for thinking about on this walk to start with gratitude that you might laugh or relate to are um, a quarantine collective gratitude list. And I'm trying to turn this into a graphic. I would love for you to share it on Instagram if it resonates, if it makes you laugh, if it makes you inspired, if it drops into some intuitive truth you're already feeling. First, finally eating all that food in the back of the freezer. I don't know about you, but we had stuff in there we probably never would have got to. We're finally eating it all. And we're also really focusing on um, eating the food that we buy instead of, you know, like all the Swiss chard and all the spinach and all the lettuce that usually goes bad. We're actually eating it. Every home project is done. You better believe it's only, you know, a week into the quarantine and so much around the house has gotten done simultaneously. The house is a disaster and I'm expressing gratitude for not caring anymore. Grateful that the closets are organized and then dropping into some real truth. Grateful that the world will learn to work from home. Grateful for the books and the rest and the intimate conversations and the meditation. Grateful for learning new ways of being and different routines teens, grateful for stillness, grateful for people who are healing, grateful for the earth being able to heal while humans are on lockdown, grateful for the way we're going to join together when the danger, so to speak, passes and the way will be stronger, grateful for the space, grateful for the grief that will come 
to mourn all the losses from this change and grateful for the new healthy choices and things will innovate in the place of that loss. Grateful for being able to dream up a new way. Grateful for this initiation and the way it's changing everything for the better. Uh, my friend shared a um, quote with me by someone um, unknown. I can't, I can't remember the name, but it said, you know, the people are staying home, you know, and the, the books and the listening and the resting and the exercise and the art that's being made and the games that are being played and the learning that's occurring about the new ways that we can be and the stillness and the listening deeper and the meditation and the prayers and the dance and being able to meet our shadows and the people who are beginning to think differently and the people who healed and the people who in the absence of their ignorance and their danger and their mindlessness and their heartless ways, the earth is beginning to heal. And as this danger passes and the people join together again, we grieve our losses, we make new choices, we dream new dreams, and we create new ways to live and heal the earth and heal ourselves. It was something, you know, that's how I interpreted it. And it really brought me into gratitude, deep, deep gratitude for this collective hardship, challenge, unexpected curveball that we're all going through and what this illness passing will teach us individually in our current societies in the world. It's really quite beautiful. And it's only beautiful for those of us who are allowing it to be. It's only beautiful for those of us that are getting more present and listening. But there are so many people in the world who don't know how to listen to their intuition, who don't know how to connect with it, and who are really stuck in fear-based thoughts. So that might be you in some form. Most of the women who follow me and listen to this podcast are really already obsessed, interested in, devoted to personal development. So along the way, I know you've developed skills to connecting with your intuition. So if you're further down the path on that, then I want to remind you some of the foundational tools that you can be sharing and reestablishing within yourself, going back to your foundation, making sure it's strong, because we're going to need a strong foundation for what's to come. And Many people are going to need you and your voice and your support because what's true is that there's no better time for the woman who already has been feeling in her intuition that it's time to take control of her own schedule, her own life, her own career. If you are not already a coach, this is a beautiful and a powerful time to think about really starting your coaching business and getting the support you need to do it quick because those of us who are already coaches and if that's you you are so lucky we are so lucky to have this career to have this freedom because our career is going to see a big boom what people are going to need is the help to get clear to listen to their own intuition to follow instincts to make innovative choices to be able to survive what's happening in our economy and thrive through this shift and this change and that's exactly what coaches do but you have to be a confident coach, you have to be a skilled coach, and in your own life, you need to be able to listen to your intuition. So let's start there, intuition. The definition is of intuition is the state of being aware of or knowing something without having to discover or perceive it. It's when your instinct reveals itself. And I want to share a little bit of a story with you because what I'm recognizing during this time is how powerful it's been and why I'm feeling so safe is be in this, these times and so secure in my career and is all because of listening to my own intu intuition over listening to fear. And so that's what I keep bringing myself back to even now is how can I listen to myself in this moment as I have been when the fear is the most intense maybe I've ever felt it in my life the most out of control my personal life 
seems, not my personal life, the collective life, but because of following my intuition, my personal life doesn't feel out of control because I've already, as I told you in the last episode, moved away from listening to authority, broke myself out of the box, and have created structures and systems that allow me to flow within them. So some of the things I wanted to share with you are, if you think about, if you're a longtime podcast listener, if you listen to season one, that began last year while I was pregnant, the entire season was about following my intuition and my instinct to slow down and simplify my life, even though it didn't really make sense. It didn't make sense in regards to fear. So the fear-based thoughts that could have been present were, I was growing my family while I was the bread earner of my family. My husband's career was not quite stable. It was in new growth stages and my household relied on me. And all, while, while it felt like it should be a time where I should be growing my income with my growing family, I was actually feeling the desire to slow down, pull back, simplify, not have a massive financial growth here, but really take time for myself to shift my whole perspective of success, business, and the way I did my work. As a result of that, I planned during my maternity leave to work harder last year not to be able to make more money, but to buy myself space, time, and freedom. So last year, we worked really hard in the beginning of the year, and actually not really hard. We worked really smart, and I did a lot less focusing on the most important things and doing them with grace. That's how the Walk With Me podcast was born. It was born of wanting to stop having to write blogs and create content and instead just be able to move my body while I was pregnant, walking outside, walking with you, and um, being able to create powerful content for you without with letting it be messy. As you know, some of the episodes you hear, cars in the background, the stroller, the waves, it's all imperfectly perfect. And it was all about honoring that intuitive guidance to simplify and slow down my life. So we planned to have space and freedom so that I was done with everything in my work by early September. Autumn was due at the mid-September. And I had planned to give myself absolutely no work until November. And, um, and I did that. Um, what was crazy is that also autumn in general, the way that in my labor story, I don't know if I shared this with you, but she was supposed to come on the autumn equinox, which is why we named her autumn September 21st. And I, she didn't come until September 30th. So it took a long time for her to come. And I had even more space than I ever planned for because my, everything was done. I had completed, really freed up my time. I had that entire time from the 21st to the 30th with more space than I ever knew what to do with. And it was such a lesson for me about what comes up when there's space that you don't know what to do with and the fearful thoughts that can arrive if you don't learn to trust the timing and the natural flow and occurrence of things. And I knew it as it was happening. What my intuition said to me, what my instinct said to me and all the lessons that were happening through this long labor process that was slow and was was really challenging me not to fear that something was wrong with my body or that we wouldn't be able to have the natural labor, but was challenging me to trust, to trust slow spaciousness and to cultivate that new way of being. And I, my intuition told me that the soul of my daughter, this is the lesson she wants me to learn as her mother, mother. This will be important in my parenting and in my life moving forward as I believe our babies and our businesses have soul lessons for us. And I, my intuition said, this is the lesson. Crazy because then we come to November and my intuition says after she's born, I'm supposed to be starting back into work and my intuition says no you're not gonna worry about it you're not gonna care what happens with this launch you're not gonna care about your income this year in fact you're not gonna plan anything or really lean back in until January and then when January came my intuition said again no more space more time no point in planning the year as I've always done I've always ran my business 
with quarterly plans, launch plans, income goals, new program goals, client goals. There were no goals for 2020. First time in 10 years of being a coach and running an online coach training program, masterminds, and retreats. The only thing I had on the calendar was a retreat that I led in Sonoma, California in February of 2020. And I knew that was the only thing, Um, and there was a lot of intuitive hits about that timing too. Now, it turns out I needed all that space for focusing on really things that were happening in the moment that I never would have known that would happen, that would require my emergent reaction, that would require me to see what's happening around me and be able to devote all my time and energy to it. The first thing was that my daughter was in a lot of pain and suffering when she was first born. Um, Doctors called it colic. As I mentioned in the last episode, I wasn't going to take that. So I gave all my time and effort, followed my intuition in how to heal her. And it was about a two-month process that I completely devoted myself to and she was healed. After that, this laws broke out across the country that would threaten to take away my right to a public school. All of you who are now at home and understand why it's scary to be told that your only option for schooling is homeschooling, what that does for you in your work, being able to work, your business, your time, your livelihood. That is why I've spent the last couple months then fighting these laws and bringing awareness to body autonomy and medical freedom rights that are being taken from us. And I really was able to devote myself to that cause because I had nothing going on in my business because I had trusted my intuition even though it didn't make sense. The other thing is my theme word for the year, I choose a theme word every year. If you wanna learn more about this, you can go to thepowerofthemes.com. I lead a webinar, it's free. You can listen to the replay of choosing a theme word. And I chose innovation this year because my, I always ask my intuition, what is the thing that I meant to learn this year, the guiding frame, the principle to live my life through, and it was innovation. And as I've become, Um, devoted to that word this year, what I've realized is innovation is all about being able to do things differently, which has led me back to a trust in and a respect of intuition. I really believe that we receive messages from the universe, that the universe speaks a language. You could call it the universe, you could call it guardian angels, you could call it God, you could call it your guides on the other side. Sometimes even our loved ones speak to us through this way. They speak in the form of signs that are delivered to us that can only be interpreted when we have a relationship and we establish space for our intuition to speak. And I'm going to teach you in a few minutes, you're going to do an exercise while we walk that will help you lean into your intuition. Again, if you're already in tune with it it's going to take you back to check in with your foundation help you get simple with it and then learn how to teach this because I believe this is what I meant to innovate this year is this ability to lead from and run your business in the space of emergence we are taught this masculine structure which I've been working on breaking for years. My entire life coach training program teaches women to run their business built on a foundation of the feminine power, which means coming from a place of honoring our emotions, taking care of ourselves first, not powering through, listening to our intuition and building a business model that's unique to us. And when you do this, I believe that's the only way to tap in into that universal flow of abundance where you can actually run a six-figure, seven-figure business without burning yourself out and by doing it from tuning into your unique calling, your unique gifts. So in many ways, I've been working with intuition, emergence, and innovation through this feminine leadership theme for many years now, for almost 10 years but I haven't really practiced full emergence like the way I am now and I've become really passionate about this idea of emergence and this combination of intuition emergence and innovation as a way of not only launching our businesses in the world but also as a way of leading and running and growing our businesses 
And it's become really important because as I've been in emergence, especially this past week through quarantine, I have started to allow my next piece of work to move through. It's so exciting. It's coming to fruition. Um, I'm even going to share some of what it has emerged so far it may change shape and form but something is really starting to come into a clear picture and i know i'm going to be launching this in may or september of this year because my intuition has told me that's the time i'm staying emergent before setting the date but it's going to be may or september so it's really cool when you start to establish trust and confidence with your intuition because it becomes a really clear and solid guide that you can trust and move and take action with. And this passion that I have been kind of teaching for years but now is coming to fruition feels really relevant for what we're going through right now. Um, You know, I'm devoting my time right now when I have it, to listen to my intuition. And what I'm hearing is a program about innovative emergence. It's looking like it's gonna be an intimate collective, a membership or a mastermind, two different levels, a lower level that's easy entry. Um, In fact, the numbers are really clear and they came to me through my intuition because of how my guides and intuition speaks to me a lot through numbers, particularly for the past three years, the number 444. I can tell you some insane, crazy, no way it's not the universe speaking to me. It's not like I just look at the clock and it's 444. I'm talking about being on a flight to lead a retreat that was flight 444 that boarded at 444 and my hotel room was room 444 all in the same trip. That is absolute, like you can't look past it. And so um, I'm pricing based off that. The membership's gonna be $44 a month. The mastermind version of it with a deeper dive and one-on-one coaching will be $444 a month. So these little pieces, I'm sharing this with you, are really clear because of this practice. And I hope you can see too that it's quite playful and fun to be in emergence if you are able to surrender. But what I'm seeing right now, I have a couple clients I'm working with inside Mentor Masterclass through this whole change, the coronavirus, the quarantine, the the jobs and economy shifting as a result, who had not listened or didn't, have a relationship it sounds like with their intuition and instead have just been really moving with what they were told to do what they felt they had to do what other people say they should do in their business and that's these masculine structures i have a client who wrote her book this year and self-published her book and did it in a very masculine way despite the fact that she self-published so that she could try to do it in a feminine way but ended up going into that masculine launch structure. I have another client who um, had went back to work despite having a, her third child and forced herself back into the flow and missed out all on that time with her her newest baby and then got laid off from work right now and doesn't know what she's going to do for work instead of staying home and putting all the effort into her coaching business like she wanted to. People who were feeling a resistance to not having to this this feeling a lack of control and then struggling because now things are not working out and it makes sense to me why I didn't make any plans in my business because I would have been wasting money. I would have wasted time because anything that anyone planned could not have seen what is coming now. Anyone who put money into launches, anybody who put all their trust into their companies are seeing that this form of safety doesn't work. And actually, we view our intuition, we view being an emergence in the moment, following our instincts as unsafe, when actually now, to me, it's proving to be the safest and most secure way to move forward. So I've been working on innovative emergence, a 
a business collective of soulful women who are all coaches and healers in the wellness industry to come together for training and healing and circle experience. And this is for women who will not allow this unexpected pandemic to interrupt their uprising. It's for, in my intuition, I've been making notes. It's all coming clear. It's if you know you must learn how to surrender to a change of plans, innovate in the moment strategy, secure sustainable success with inspired action. If you believe that self-care and healing is the place to start and it's gotta happen fast because of the times we're in. If you believe the only way to survive and thrive is to get energized and clear. If you believe sisterhood and coaching will serve you in moving through fear and resistance. If you're ready to come out of your cocoon and turn this unexpected challenge into your greatest uprise. If you are feeling that desire to implement structure in your calendar so you can thrive despite chaos from a devotion to flow. If you are ready to become an empowered leader and guide during these uncertain times like so many of you are feeling. You first must know that if you want a business coach to help you refocus your efforts on what needs to happen now to make your vision come to life, if you want a feminine leadership coach to help you create your ideal schedule, if you want a powerful collective sisterhood to learn intuition, discernment, and the keys to managing this massive shift with embodied ease, that I will be creating this program and launching it soon. So please, if you're listening to this, message me. I want to know who intuitively is feeling called and um, I'll get you the details as they form and maybe even open up some early enrollments to those who are listening and um, and feel called to secure a spot. So um, just following my intuition by the moment, didn't know I was going to say that, but there it is. So We can't do this with our mind though. We can't achieve this next level. We can't survive what's happening with our mind. We have to start with our intuition. So I wanna do an exercise with you now and show you a few ways to lean into this. And then next podcast, we're gonna talk more about emergence and the following one, innovation, because I believe that's the order. Intuition first, emergence next, knowing how to be in emergence and shift plans and gears. Like my client with her book, what I'm working with her on is she had all this money she invested, all these plans that she had for her self-publishing and they are not really feeling relevant or working. And as she tries to push through and do what she said she was going to do, that's the masculine, instead of reacting to what's present, what's here right now and shifting gears, I believe that's the key to her success, not only her success, but even having a better launch than she ever could have planned. But it starts with tuning into your intuition, and if you've been out of touch with it, it's really hard to shut your mind off. Intuition is only possible to support us when we slow down and we're present and we give ourselves enough time to listen. I think this is the potential gift of quarantine. So the a few things for you to think about you know developing yourself as being able to be in self-love heal yourself tune into your intuition as your guide instead of feeling like that is the opposite of success trusting it as success and my commitment to you is that I really want to help you find your way of tuning inward and trusting yourself like I said in last week's episode not trusting a guru or a guide or a psychic or a mystic or a friend but actually becoming your own healer your own guide your own mystic abilities your own shamanistic gifts your own friendship within and partnering with yourself to move forward and make decisions and there's a couple ways that I've been able to heal and really empower myself this has been through expressing and developing a relationship with intuition and emergence and innovation has dramatically increased my confidence in a time where I would probably be freaking out now and I'm genuinely not Um, and the second has been through leaning into coaching techniques that's my passion that's the way I'm of service like really understanding the mind body soul and the techniques that allow us to ask better questions during our life and 
if you can really follow along with me this season of the podcast and lean into this, I know that your trust, your flow, your abundance is going to skyrocket to the universe and back. Your ability to be able to feel love over fear, your the ability to just look at life and your business as a daily adventure, I promise you listening and walking with me each week is going to be the best investment for you. Um, so, you know, I shared with you that general definition of intuition is about being in awareness and knowing something without having to discover it or perceive it, but it just being there before it happens. I, I think that really only kind of touches the surface. I think the most important thing to know is intuition is not about your mind and your thoughts. It's not about having the answers. It's actually more about really love, self-love, about being in the vibration of your heart. And if you are able to come from and live with a connection to your heart space, then you're able to open up to that universal language, that love language that I think is how the universe speaks to us. And this is when your intuition can really begin to thrive. And the most important thing to know is that our brain really tries to run the show in our life, in our culture. And if we're blocked in our physical body, only connected to our thoughts, then we are able to be ruled by and overcome by fear and then we forget how to access our heart so i i really work with women to first come from this space even as a business model and there's so many women that you know don't join my program because they're like oh i i need to work on my website i need to have a, a launch funnel strategy i need to work with marketing experts or media professionals guess what all those people are out of work out of money and really freaking out about what to do right now you know who's not people who know how to trust themselves love themselves come into their heart are not freaking out and instead are actually probably thriving and even leading in a way that our culture and people who are in fear need right now but we have to be able to let go of control and that takes a lot of faith faith a lot of trust a lot of surrender and knowing that you're going to be safe and that you're guided by higher powers when you listen to your intuition and act from it you start to show proof like what i've shared with you today like all these things i didn't understand why they were happening i listened to them and did it anyways despite it seeming crazy despite it seeming unsafe because i have proof from tracking it that it works and it's made me trust in a power greater than myself and it's made me trust in myself too to listen to that power and respond so if i'm saying you know, all your brain is going to object to all of this. That's the problem. That's, that's what makes it hard. It's going to tell you that you're crazy. Um, and the truth is that there's universal forces present in every moment, always trying to give you guidance, always trying to give you signs, always trying to send you in the right direction. Our intuition really is looking about everything. And it's recognizing too that we're not as isolated as we try to make ourselves be. We're not alone. You know, our mind wants us to think that we're alone. Our culture that's run on ego and power wants us to feel alone. Hence, thinking this quarantine is social distancing. It's not about social distancing. Yes, it's about having our bodies away from other people, but it doesn't mean our hearts, our minds, our connection, our service. In fact, it should be the opposite. So when we're in that brain place, we feel fear. But when you're in a place where you're connected to your heart and the universe and this language, you you're able to have and your emotions are able to flow you're able to feel positivity you're able to feel inspiration you're able to feel love and serenity so i want you to think about that for a minute because think about a time when you've fallen in love in your life whether it's the first time you fell in love with another person or with having a fur baby or a baby or even falling in love with the creation of your business for the first time, during those moments, you are convinced that life is pure 
magic. Um, you feel the way your heart opens and it allows you to make uh, decisions and to even look through a lens of love over fear. And so I want to ask you if you're willing to learn to cultivate an ability to operate from a place of being in love with your life all the time. And it is possible as you're able to heal, as you're able to release any obsession and addiction that's unconscious that you have to fear and negativity and free yourself from that karmic pull. Getting in a habit with negativity gives you this like numbness around remembering who you really are, remembering that all the ways that you are safe instead of focusing on what's not safe, what's not worth it, what's not lovable, what's hard, coming into your intuition helps you to feel into what's possible, what's ignited. Intuition is something that most of us have to spend time and have a devoted practice to reconnecting to. And if you've been out of practice with it or unintentional with it, then there's probably a lot of doubt and ego that's creeping in and a probably a lot of worthiness that's being lost because you're leaning on authorities to tell you what to do instead of leaning on yourself and your connection to the highest good for all. So it's unselfish to be in tuned and confident about your intuition. This happens, this ability to use your intuition and come back into relationship and awaken from it happens by using it, not just thinking about it, but doing it. And intuition can be accessed in a lot of really beautiful ways. And it's very unique and individual how each of us do that because intuition really takes us being available, us being creative, us allowing, us being able to expand our full range, have trust, deeply hear, and allow feeling and sensing and seeing and smelling. And you might even say like, why imagination? Because you're not just making up things. Imagination is like this tool that allows us to get out of the chaos of the brain. And imagination and innovation is the way that we set ourselves up to hold space for new things, for different things, ultimately for that flow to come that's not keeping us stuck. So innovation and imagination opens us up. So what's really important about that and a good place to start is I want you to think right now just about somewhere where you have felt a little rigid, somewhere that you felt fear, somewhere that you felt a lack of control where you're trying to control. And I just want you to ask yourself, is this my thought or theirs? Am I creating it or are they? And you just have to let yourself be clear here. This is you starting to tune into your intuition. And you might not really understand at first. It's not going to feel that easy. But if you engage with your intuition enough, this ability to know will grow quicker. So just sit with it and just notice what are the thoughts? What's coming up? And does it belong to you or somebody else? That's the first way to start to ignite relationship with your intuition. The next you want to say, if it feels like it's, a thought or an energy that is coming from you, from your intuition, from your soul, then you want to continue the conversation with her and ask, what do I want from this? And you want to deal with it. You want to take responsibility for it. You want to do some cleanup and some clear out and some responsiveness to what is said. If the thought or the energy belongs to someone else, then I want you to ask yourself, does it feel like love? Is it expansive? Does it raise my vibration? And if it feels like love, then you can just let this flow. You can feel this energy. You can allow it and embrace it and know that that universe is speaking with you. If it does not feel like love, this is where boundaries become really important. And all you have to do is say, no, this thought is not welcome. It does not belong to me. Please return to sender. And when you give an energetic no, also you want to check in 
Does it listen right away or does it take you doing it a few times? This is gonna show you how much work and time you need to spend with your intuition, strengthening your ability to learn and respond to lessons and to move. If it takes a while and it's not happening, then you just want to um, keep in practice with it. If you reach this place of awareness where you're able to start to deal with your purpose in life, with your essence, with what is coming through, then you're going to be able to open. You're going to be able to touch base with your intuition. You're going to be guided to remember why you're here, what your next step is, and do the next right thing. Oh my God, that's coming from watching Frozen 2 on Disney um, <laughs> on repeat the last few days. You can probably relate if you have kids. Um, so that's one way to tune into your intuition. I'm going to give you one final thing to do um, with your intuition before we close. So you can even pause this and um, and do this for 10 minutes for the rest of your walk. I want you to just walk for 10 minutes, just focusing on maintaining a breath pattern of your choice. So maybe you breathe in through your nose for two and out for two. And just keep that pattern. Whatever pattern your intuition guides you to use. And then I want to invite you to connect to your soul through your breath. I want you to then, as you're breathing, note how does your intuition communicate with you Breath is that direct access to your soul. So as you take connection, as you numb your mind by using a pattern, come into connection with the vibration of your body and your soul and your intuition. How does your intuition start to speak? It might be a tingle in your feet. It might be a release of tension. It might be vibration that happens somewhere. It might be heat. Um, in your wrists or your hands. It might be a noticing that happens. It might be that you start to see signs. It could be emotions move. You might start to cry. Um, your body might get cold. This noticing and tracking is key to connecting with your unique language. And it's important to listen to everything that comes through in the way that it comes through. And I want to, if you have your phone, maybe start to list in your notes section how it speaks. First, what you feel, what you see, what you notice, what you sense, if it comes in sounds, if it comes in sights, if it comes in feelings, if it comes from animals, if it comes from goosebumps, if it comes from a wind on your face or a a knowing of truth. How does it come? How do you feel it? How does it speak to you? And then see if you can connect the dots. See if you can connect the dots to the way that it speaks to you and what that tells you about your intuition, what to look for moving forward. And also see if it really helps you to um, notice what the invitation is. And the guide here, the point here, is to actually respond to it and do something about it. It's actually not to listen and then give back into fear or resistance and not do it, but it's to listen and respond. And I guarantee you, if you cultivate this relationship in these two ways, checking in with your thoughts and removing the ones that are fear-based, ego-based, um, world-taught or authority-influenced, and coming into accessing and attuning to that universal flow voice, then cultivating a breath practice that allows you to really understand how your intuition speaks to you, and then being able to take and translate that into some form of action and response in your life. This is the practice. I hope that you are able to use this to piggyback off of the conversation we started last week about authority and really drop into trusting and building a confidence with your intuition that can become your greatest business guide, your healing teacher, and ultimately to help you make decisions in this crazy time that we are all going to walk beside each other through together. 
I have also thought about how to create an emergent practice out of this. What you're now tuning into is emergence. The key to emergence is your intuition, in my opinion. And this is a body of work I've been working on now for over almost two years. It started as unrecognizable like thoughts that swirled that I couldn't ground began with the practice in walking my talk with it in my life last year. And now I'm actually putting this into a curriculum, into a collective space where we can learn and walk with it and practice it, where I can teach it, where we can cultivate it together in a collaborative way. If this is speaking to you, if you are feeling like you are ready to launch your coaching business if you have not already. I invite you to use this time of quarantine to take the self-discovery week if you haven't done it or if you didn't complete it. It's a seven-day practice where I use coaching to guide you to self-care and your intuition as a means to launching your business. And right now we are opening up because of this coronavirus COVID-19 crisis across the world, new scholarships for the program that you can apply for for a limited amount of time. So you can head over to mentormasterclass.com to take the self-discovery week and to go through and see if the way I teach, the way I guide is the perfect thing to help you start your online coaching business so you can take that control back into your own hands and do the work you're really called to do now that you might be seeing that those safety structures you thought were so safe are not so safe after all. Um, And what is safe and what is reliable and what is going to boom as a result of this is the coaching industry. And you wanna get in on it now. You wanna take action on it now. And I wanna support you in doing that by helping you to afford the program. So when you apply, we're gonna be giving out some scholarships based on need to help people get into the program and start the program now. So if that speaks to you, awesome. If you are really called to um, my new program, which is in emergence right now and will be launching soon, um, Innovative Emergence, which might be speaking to you if this practice is what you need. If you recognize that all the plans you've made, all the outside action you thought would help in marketing to take your business to the next level doesn't matter if you can't work with your intuition, with emergence, and with innovation as a path, then please send me a direct message either on Instagram, janine.yoder, or in my email, jey at janineyoder.com. Let me know you're interested and I'll make sure you're on the list, the wait list for all the information for this collective and this experience when it comes out and when you can join me. Um, With that also, you've got the podcast. And next week, we're going to talk about emergence and deep dive into the lessons and the practice of that a little bit more. And I'll follow that with innovation. So we'll get a little theme going here on our walks and um, start to cultivate and develop it over time. Thank you for walking. It's been a couple longer walks this week. Usually they're 30 minutes. um, But hey, we need the fresh air more anyways right now and probably a good break to get out of the house. Thank you for listening. I'm sending you love and hope that you are tuning into your own experience of gratitude for what this challenge that we're all facing together worldwide is initiating in you and that these practices that we're going to bring in the podcast over the next few weeks will help. Please share this podcast episode with anyone you know who has been freaking out, who has not been able to release control or surrender, who needs to be reminded of gratitude and maybe someone who lost their job recently or doesn't know what they're going to do next and you recognize as someone who might have the gift of leadership, of coaching, of healing Um, and pass this on to them, pass off the self-discovery week to them. Please let's together get empowered break out of that box, start listening to what we want to create in the world and forming a new world from this, turning this breakdown really into a breakthrough. Thank you for walking with me. I love you so dearly. I want to hear anything that's come up for you. So send me a DM on Instagram or go ahead and send me an email. And I can't wait to see how we all evolve, connect and grow through the process. See you next week.